moments to uh, pray in together. Ah, thank you, God. Thank you for this day just like it is. Thank you for all the beautiful souls that are here, for the ones that are still on their way, for the ones who are joining us virtually or just in spirit. Ah, we call this day good in advance. We give thanks for the people, for that food back there, for the lessons and the inspiration that will come from the music and just being together as like-minded individuals here celebrating our truth together. And for that, we are grateful. So we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Oh, man. All right. In between chewing, sing along with Maria. Stand up if you can. You know, there's choreography to go with this song. I'm actually lucky I didn't choke. I mean, when Wally got up here and started doing the opening prayer, I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm next, and I got to sing. <laughs> Swallow some coffee and some water to choke down the delicious food that I'm partaking in. So I'm going to give you just a second to swallow your food and stand, if you so choose, and join me in singing the call to worship song, Gratitude. I'm so grateful. <clears throat> singing along with me make yourselves comfortable and before you pick up the next bite I'm gonna <laughs> oh happy st. Patty's Day by the way and um, my son is a junior at NC State so I have to say go pack <laughs> now I'm gonna invite you to take a look at a neighbor and repeat after me good morning, good morning. I love you this morning 
And I sure do appreciate you being here. And for those of you at home, know that we're saying this to you as well. And we invite you to say it in the comments. And um, we invite you also to help us grow this loving spiritual community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to all of our pages. And I should say all that to you guys, too. Make sure that you are liking, subscribing, sharing all of our social media pages. Now I'm going to invite you to join me in reading the March Affirmations on the screen here together. God is my strength in which I trust. I declare I am full of power, strength, and determination. And the Lent reading for today is a uh, Lent is a 40 day period that represents a conscious release of what no longer serves us so that we may discover new ways to live our happiest and best life. It is a season of spiritual growth a time for progressive unfoldment. And we have a special guest joining us today to read the uh, Lent reading, Todd Humphrey. Today is Wednesday, March 13th. I let go of loneliness. Random feelings of loneliness have washed over me while dancing to a favorite song in a crowded arena sharing birthday cake with friends, or walking alone on a moonlit night. They are like waves crashing down in my consciousness, pulling my attention to thoughts and feelings that I am unworthy, unloved, and unlovable. As I pause in the silence, I understand that loneliness is my experience only when I misuse my faculty of divine love. I release false ideas that encourage my selfish and fickle withholding of love. These false ideas are grounded in my fear of the appearance of lack and limitation. Our way shower, Jesus, directed us to love others as he loved, without condition and without limits. Divine love is a universal and harmonizing power. It allows each of us to experience the truth of oneness. When I love with abandon, I understand my connection to all of life, and I am never lonely. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 11, we read, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. Let's affirm together, I joyfully and fearlessly love with abandon. Together, I joyfully and fearlessly love with abandon. Today, Wednesday, March 13th, I let go of loneliness. And we're going to follow that with our prayer chaplain, Anita Shaver. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm the prayer chaplain for today. And no matter what you're growing through, we want to pray with you about it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether you judge it, or whether you don't judge it, we want to pray about it with you. Seek one of us out after the service. I'm supposed to be wearing my teal banner that we just got, and it's safely at home in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if any prayer chaplain would raise their hand so people recognize you and know that they can pray with you. There's Wally. There's Jody. Jody's new. She'd love to practice on you. <laughs> <laughs> you can click on the prayer request button um, on our website. So we know that prayer works. So let's do it together. I invite you to think of someone or something that you'd like to send some love to as we pray together. And now we think of that issue that we, we're thinking, and we ask ourselves, what is the truth of this situation? Is what I think about this situation really the truth? And we're looking for absolute truth. And I remind you that the letters 
listen and the letters from silence go together. So I would invite you to listen for answers, not to try to hire a consultant or to ask friends, but to listen to God. Today we have our prayer list, Treva Whitmore, Rod Randolph, Ruth Burnell, Casey Martin, Lori Price, Joyce Launder, Patricia Mintz, Sarah Sharp. And so now for our meditation. Today we are asking, asking questions and we seek answers. We're open to the information that comes to us during this time. So I invite you to close your eyes and think of anything you've been wondering in your life, some situation that you need guidance, now is the time. I invite you to ask your question and sit in the silence and you will know the answer. When you know, when you know, when you know, what is it that Wally says, that's us. Listen in the silence. And now we bring our awareness back into the space. And I invite you to go forth knowing that any ask that you had will be answered. Pay attention and listen for the answers. They'll come to you. And so it is. So I was not scheduled to be the worship assistant today, but I do find this to be in divine order because I get great joy in announcing Tanya Ross every time she comes. (laughs) 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 And I wore my green. Tanya Ross is a singer, songwriter, and musician. She is a native of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Her repertoire consists of music from the 70s to the 2000s and styles that range from R&B, neo-soul, smooth jazz, traditional reggae, and her own originals. Tanya Ross has released three CDs, which I'm hoping we have some in the back of, um, Free as a Bird, Baggy Jeans, and Sunshine and Rain, which have had rave reviews, even from us. Tanya's future to come looks very bright. She often says, I just want to, be, I just want to spread love, healing, and hope through music, which she does. Tanya Thanks the creator for blessing her with such unique gifts, and so do we. Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from me, by name Michael Swan. When she passes each one, she passes, goes up. When she walks, she's like a samba that sways so jewel and sways so gentle that when she passes each one, she passes, goes up. Her 
so sadly How can I tell her I love her Yes, I would give my heart gladly But each day when she walks to the sea If she doesn't see you when that great music's coming out, she's just not paying attention. And somebody that don't pay any more attention than that, you know, sometimes you got to bless them and release them. But at least she inspired a beautiful song for somebody to write. Hey, I, I want to add uh, one extra name uh, to our prayer list and sending our well wishes out. Um, Ellie McFalls is up in the Buffalo area, and her mother made her transition uh, at about 7 this morning. So, uh, But Ellie was able to be there uh, by the bedside when she went. So that's a true gift. So uh, sending love and blessings from here to New York instantaneously because that's the way spirit works. Ah, so happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. I have to say that since church started and I was sitting there pointing this way, I got up here, I was like, oh, a lot of people showed up since then. So um, if, if you're new or you're just unsure on Breakfast Church Sundays, you're welcome to get up and down and get more food and get drink during service. It's not rude. Um, you know, maybe don't do it in the middle of a prayer or something, but um, otherwise... Yeah, eat up. There's, you know, good Southern style. There's leftovers already back there, so have them. Anyway, so we're looking at St. Patrick today on the day, on his day, right? And uh, it took me a lot of time to learn that when it's St. Patty's, it's with D's instead of T's, which still doesn't make sense to me because Patrick was with a T. But uh, I finally looked it up, and it's because of an original Gaelic spelling of the word that Patrick came from. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's with a D instead of a T. So that's where that comes from. Plus, I think the men just wanted something separate than the way, because they said, well, Patty would also be Patricia, and they wanted their own thing. So they, they were like, we'll go with a D instead of a T, and then that's a win. So um, here's some interesting facts about St. Patrick. First, uh, he is a patron saint of Ireland, but um, was ne he's not like officially a Catholic saint. He was never canonized because I was like, well, what magic? Tr you know, all I know about it is what I've seen in movies. So I'm like, he did something magic, right? But no. Um, he also was not Irish. Did you all? He was, he was uh, Roman and he grew up in England. He then was, as a teenager, he was kidnapped and uh, taken to Ireland as a slave, where he lived for, I think, six or seven years as a slave. And then during that time, he had started praying. He did not grow up Christian, right? But he had been introduced to prayer at some point, and he started trying to use it some, and he was praying some while he was being a slave in Ireland. And at some point, he got, he had a dream where God said to him, the ship to take you home is ready. And so he escaped from wherever it was he 
and then went, you know, like I think it said 200 miles to where the ship was and convinced them to let him on, and he went back to England. And once he got there, he really embraced Christianity against his family's wishes. And then while he was doing his work as, as a, a minister or whatever title he had, then he ended up being a bishop. But um, uh, he had another dream that said, uh, the Irish people don't know this stuff that you're teaching, and they need to know it, so you need to go back. So he was called to go back to the place he had escaped, and he went back there, and he's credited as bringing Christianity to Ireland. Now, you know, on the Internet, if there's one thing for sure, there are naysayers. So there are people who are like, oh, he didn't really bring it. Somebody else brought it before, the, you know, but... He was the one that at least popularized it and went through. And one of the things that he did that was wise that gives us something to look at metaphysically as well is when he started going out into these communities and really risking his life, right? He was a returned slave that came back just, you know, a few years later. And he's going to talk about stuff that, you know, most of these people were pagans. And so, you know... Like, they don't even really want to hear about this stuff. So he would start by going to the kings of each of these different regions, and he would preach to them to get their blessing to then spread that word to the other people in their kingdom. And I found that interesting because metaphysically, uh, you know, there are all kinds of kings in the Bible. So metaphysically, when we talk about kings, we're talking about the executive faculty of spirit within us. And so uh, if we've got things that we're wanting to shift in our own lives, the first thing you got to do is change your mind to change your life on it, right? So you got to go work on what your thoughts are around the current thing that you're wanting to change. And that set of thoughts is, let's say, a kingdom of its own. And so you're wanting to get in there to shift that. So you got to start really talking up you that's where you use your affirmations right we talk about denials and affirmations a lot because they're important and they're very helpful especially when you want to shift stuff and often we like to just go straight to the affirmation and stay positive let's not talk about the negative part and that's great often it works wonderfully often but when you really are working on changing your mind about something You've got to do the denial part first. Say, this does not have the hold on me. This does not have a permanent home in my thoughts. I'm no longer going to provide free rent to this thing that I don't think is helping me anymore. So I'm going to change my mind about that. And I'm going to do that by honoring that there's some reason, even if I can't think of a good one, there's some reason that this belief system took hold for me. And so I'm going to honor that it has served its time and that it's time to shift. And then I'm going to give the affirmation of giving all the reasons that I want this new thought system flowing for me, right? And I speak about it like in those loose terms because we've all got our own thing. Like right now, we've all got our own thing of something that would be nice to change our minds about, right? I can say, I, you know, I like to give you like the seemingless, meaningless examples because it doesn't have to be life-changing. I can say, I hate going to Walmart. And many people in this room just said, me too, right? I don't, it's not that I mind the store. It's got a lot of stuff in it. I buy lots of it, so I can't hate the, the stuff inside of it, right? I don't like the big parking lot, right, and, and all that stuff. But, like, I can change my mind because in the small town I live in, in Eden, there are certain things I can get at Food Lion, and there are certain things I can get at Walmart, and the two do not mix. So I have to go to both sometimes, right? And so I can say, oh, I hate going to Walmart. Well, I don't because I don't have to go there. I could just stop buying those things, but I want those things. So it is more beneficial to me to release the belief 
that I hate going to Walmart or that I hate any. It's like, all right, well, if you hate it, let's find the, the love because, you know, I, I, I do love to go shopping and they got stuff in there, right? Um, this week after uh, doing a couple of interviews, this week, by the way, was um, the week that Uni Unity Worldwide Ministries did their interviews for uh, potential ministers to be licensed and to be ordained. And Miranda and I both went through that process. We had three interviews each with panels of ministers. And um, so after the day one, I did two back to back. And when we finished the second one, I decided I was going to treat myself to a trip to Marshall's, right? So that was my treat. I got to go buy something. I don't even know what I bought, but I did buy something. Um, and, uh, and so you all know, we'll be working on, on the details of it. Miranda's in the back, uh, to Miranda and I both were recommended for ordination, uh, from Unity Worldwide Ministries this week. So, ah, <laughs> and they were saying, you know, they're talking about when you can do what, and they're like, well, you know, if you do that there, you can't do that here because you can't be ordained twice, except I was already ordained, so apparently you can be ordained twice. So um, I said I was going to make people start calling me Reverend Reverend now because I'm double, double licensed and almost double ordained. Anyway, back to, back to Patty. Um, so I, I love that what he did is what we can do for ourselves. We don't have any kings and kingdoms here, but in our minds, I absolutely promise you that you do. You have things that you're, that you would like to change, right? Like, let's say, let's go with weight loss as a thing. I really would like to drop those pounds, but well, I just can't stop eating that cake. I promise you as a diabetic, I promise you that you can. I look the day that they diagnosed me with diabetes. I had a box of nerds. That's the little sour candies in my bedside table. And I, I didn't get rid of them for six months because I was like, well, but they're so good and I hate to throw them away, but they were, the box is already open. So you couldn't give them to anybody else. And right. And, but like literally on that day, because I had grown up with uh, a grandmother who, who passed with complications from diabetes and my dad who had to give himself insulin shots and, you know, all these things. And at that time I was earning my living as an extra on TV shows where it was usually going to be a 12 hour work day, but you honestly didn't know when you showed up. I showed up one time and they had made changes during the night, but I'm union, so it, it was too late to not hire me anymore, but they didn't need me, so literally showed up, signed a thing, and then got signed back out and got paid uh, the eight-hour uh, day. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, you know, but usually when you got there, you were going to work 12 hours, which meant you were going to be there a minimum of 13 because they got the hour of lunch for free, right? So all I knew about diabetes was that my dad had insulin that had to live in a refrigerator, so he would go home from our family dry cleaners and go and take shots during the day and all this stuff. And I knew I couldn't do that. if I When I got to a set, I didn't get to leave that set and go home in the middle of the day. So... It was important to me to make some changes immediately. And suddenly when the circumstances changed, it was easy to release what I would have told you a day or two days before. Oh, no, I could never go without that. And suddenly I'm like, well, I don't want to go on the insulin shot. I don't want to have to get home or carry some cooler bag around. Like, I don't want to do those things. So the circumstances have changed of what's important to me now. And then when people are like, wow, you're really, because then I, dro I dropped 20 pounds in a month and, um, and 30 pounds in two months total. And, uh, you know, I was walking and I was doing all this stuff that I had said before I didn't want to do. One of my friends called me once in my early days in LA and she's like, Hey, do you want to go hiking? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'll, I will go with you to a movie theater. I will go with you to a restaurant. But what you're talking about sounds hot and dirty and I am not interested. Right. And then suddenly when the circumstances changed, I was hiking at least five days a week. I was doing 12 to 15 miles a week, hiking up that hill that the Hollywood sign is on. And, um, because you can change once you decide to change your mind about it. Um, now, I, 
I can't take credit. I was going to wear this shirt anyway because it's, it's Shamrock at St. Patrick's. Um, I also got it at Walmart. Um, <laughs> it was on sale. Um, but uh, St. Patrick used the Shamrock in teaching uh, the Trinity. And, and because there's the one stem that everything else is connected to. So when he was teaching it, certainly, he was teaching Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we still teach that now. We just don't use those words. We say mind, idea, and expression, right? Because we're talking about getting to that mind and then finding those ideas that we celebrate that work really, really well for us. And then when we come across the ones that don't, say, yeah, we're going to make some shifts on this one so that what I can do is express what I want to express in my life, what I choose to manifest in my life, as opposed to just taking what comes along. Um, let's see what else I got in here for you on, on Patrick. The, the interesting part is also in following our calls, right? It's like, what would Patrick do? I mean, obviously, Patrick was like, oh, you know what sounds fun? Let's go back to that place I was held captive and forced to work and doesn't really, like, has a hard time with food in the winter. They all get, you know, like the shamrock is special in Ireland because it also is that sign of spring to let you know, hey, that ground's getting to, into a place where we can start doing some farming and get some food going and that sort of thing, right? So, like... It wasn't like some land of milk and honey. It wasn't the promised land he was going back to, even if he hadn't had his own negative experience there. But he chose to go there because he felt the call to go there. Like, and he was, he was like, no, this is something that I have tried and it works. And I don't think enough people know about it. And I know that there's this land called Ireland that like they're not practicing any of this. And I think it could really help them. That's why I'm a minister. Like, I didn't have any aspirations of being a minister. Like, that's way too, I cuss too much to be, you know. Um, that held me back. I was like, well, I can't be a minister. I cuss too much. And then I, then I hung out with Della Reese privately, and she did too. So, um, and she was an angel. Um, so, uh, anyway. There's a poem that is uh, credited. I think they would call this a poem. It's long. And normally I wouldn't read this whole thing. But I want to read. This is credited as something that St. Patrick wrote himself. And if you really li like, it gets into stuff that, like, I definitely wouldn't get into the details of some of what gets in here. But I don't know if anybody taught him about denials and affirmations or what they called it then, but that is absolutely what he's doing here is denials and affirmations. He goes way in on the denials, so buckle up. Um, this is called uh, St. Patrick's Breastplate. It's also known as the Shield for Divine Protection or a Hymn of Hope for God's Help in Adversity. And it says, I arise today. Through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through a belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth and his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion and his burial, through the strength of his resurrection and his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, in obedience of angels, in service of archangels, in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward, in the prayers of patriarchs, in preachings of the apostles, in faith of confession, in innocence of virgins, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, Light of the sun, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of the wind, depth of the sea, stability of the earth, firmness of the rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me. God's hand to guard me, 
God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me. From snares of the devil, from temptations of vices, from everyone who desires me ill, afar and anear, alone or in a multitude. I summon today all these powers between me and evil against every cruel, merciless power from that opposes my body and soul against incantations of false prophets, against black laws of pagandom, against false laws of heretics, against craft of idolatry, against spells of women, sorry about that, and smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul, Christ shields me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, wounding, so that reward may come to me in abundance. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of every man who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ in the ear that hears me, I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through a belief in the threeness, through a confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. Now, did y'all know that y'all were singing St. Patrick's poem, apparently? Christ within me, before me, behind me, in me, right? I'm like, I have to ask Karen Drucker if she looked at that to write her song. But, um, you know, spirit also speaks to us all individually. But this is credited to have been written in uh, the year... 377. So um, Karen Drucker was not around to get that at the same time, right? So enjoy St. Patrick's Day for all the fun stuff, but also take the time to let Patrick inspire you to follow your own calling, to be completely attached to it, and to know that God is with you all day, every day, and everything that you're doing, you have a partner to help you. You are never alone. You are one with God. You are one with all the different three parts of mind, body, and expression of mind, idea, and expression, that you are in charge of you, and you get to have the most wonderful, powerful, beautiful life because you are a child of God in whom he is well pleased. I love you. I bless you, and I behold the Christ that absolutely is you. Thank you for being here today. All right, I'm going to invite Nick up. I don't see Nick. There's Nick to do the offertory invitation. In other words, if you don't give electronically, get that money up. No. (laughs) So think what a gift this community is, how it nurtures our soul. Think about what this means to you and how it lifts you up. There are many ways to give through Venmo, through the give page on our, on our website. Think about what this gives to your life, what it builds up in you. Where, will you, where would you be without this gift? This is something. This is so important to me and in a way I cannot even express, especially right now. (laughs) So support this ministry. That's what it's about, because with you, this ministry lives, grows, and becomes more and reaches out to more people. Thank you. And as they come around collecting the gifts, if you give electronically, I invite you just to uh, pass out some love in the room and towards the gifts and say thank you as we sing this together. We'll do the full thing.
We get, they need extra time to get around all the tables. And sing along if you will. Thank you, God, for everything. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank gifts have moved to the back of the room, but we can place our hands on our hearts and give thanks for this place, for the gifts, and say together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And so it is. And uh, Nick, I meant to keep you up here because you were going to do the first announcement about Easter choir. There's going to be an Easter choir, by the way. <laughs> so all of you who sing, we would like to invite you to uh, please talk to me. We invite your harmonies. We invite if you sing melody. We're going to have some songs that we're going to do and for, for Easter. And that's just what it's about. And the more people we can get involved with this, the better. And we will make a joyful noise. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. As I look out, I see one or two new faces, and I feel quite certain that our ushers have already given you a packet. If they have not, I invite you to please raise your hand so that you can get one, because we also invite you to fill out the, um, the comment card so that we can stay connected with you and let you know of all the exciting things that are coming up, some of which I'm getting ready to read about right now. And we appreciate you being here. Tapping into your extra sensory perception with Linda Cohen. The last class is Thursday, March 21st. It's 6.30 p.m. via Zoom only. Any of you that may have challenges getting onto Zoom, see probably Miranda would be the best one to help you uh, <laughs> get onto Zoom. <laughs> She's our IT techie in, around here. Okay, so if you go to the uh, e-blast on Tuesdays, there is a Zoom link. Click on that, and it'll walk you through exactly how to do that. Yes. Okay, so uh, what I'm hearing is that if you're not seeing the link, then you may have it blocked through your Outlook or, you know, whatever server you're using. So you have to go to the top and click unblock and it magically appears. So that's uh, via Zoom only. Each class is a standalone lesson. So if you're only making it to the last one, come on down. Uh, meditation, March for Peace with Anita Shaver. It, Wednesday, March 21st at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom only. March 20th. 20th. I said 21st. I was reading the one above thinking, wait a minute. One says the 21st, one says the 20th. But it's Thursday is Linda and Wednesday is Anita. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So with the meditation, set the tone for a peaceful month ahead. And then we're going to have sound healing and qigong with Nancy Pitkin and Laura Farlow. Sunday, April 7th from one, at 1 p.m. in person. Please join Nancy and Laura for an afternoon of healing through sound, chanting, movement, qigong, and mandala work as we pay tribute to Mother Earth and celebrating spring. Registration is $25, and the link can be found can be located in the Tuesday's UIG newsletter. Let our chaplains pray with you. I think they raised their hand at the beginning of, but you can do it again. Um, There's a private room across the hall. There's more space upstairs. So um, anything that you may be growing through, they would love to pray with you. Tanya Ross! So this morning, my song selection changed, which went with your message, kind of, because what I picked out from your message is everything in life is joy and pain, right? But the thing is the darkness and the light go together, and they must exist together in order for us to understand our expansion of our consciousness in life. So this song is so appropriate. I didn't even know what the message was today, but... It goes well, joy and pain. Remember when you first found love, how it felt so good. Time that lasts forevermore, like you thought it would. so bad How come the things that make us happy they make us sad Well it seems to me bad joy and pain like sunshine and rain joy and pain like sunshine Say 
Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, and the, the great information, let's just start a new lesson right now. Settle back. Or go get some more breakfast. No, we have to be done. Um, but the good news on that is within the human experience, you are either going to experience joy or pain. Like you can't really do both at the same time. Same way, outside, it's either going to be sunny or it's going to be raining. Like it's not, you know, Except those times when it says the devil's beating his wife, and right? But, um, uh, but what we know about rain and sun is that the sun is always shining, even in the middle of night. The sun never goes down, and in that same way, spiritually, joy is always flowing, always available. So go claim that today as you move forward. Now, I want to make sure to thank whoever brought these flowers, and I don't know who brought them. Suzanne, thank you. Aren't they beautiful? So thank you for that. Um, next week uh, will be Palm Sunday. We've never been one of those churches that waves the palms, but if somebody wants to bring them, I, you know. Uh, we'll come up with a dance for it. Our music uh, next week is going to come from a new musician for us. He, came, he and his wife came and visited us last July on uh, Hippie Church Sunday. His name is Daniel... I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Keppel, K-E-P-E-L. And he's the uh, music director at Unity of Lynchburg, and he will be here doing music for us uh, next Sunday as well. So, and he's pretty wonderful. You can look him up on, follow him on Facebook, and you can find his music on YouTube and stuff as well. K-E-P-E-L. So, um, all right, so that's it. So let's, uh, let's, do the peace song together. If you'd like to hold hands, stand if you will. Uh, if you'd like to hold hands, do. If you'd rather not, just place your hands prayerfully in the air. Everybody knows what that means by now in this COVID world. And let us sing together. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as creator, 
family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be my moment now with every step i take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me and together let us affirm the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is. God is and all is well. And so it is. Go have a great week on purpose. Hey. By the way, um, you know, Tanya is with us every other month. When she's here in May, you know, she's also a minister now as well. And uh, when she's here May 19th, I'll be up in Ohio, and she'll be giving the lesson as well as doing the music that day. Something to look forward to. Thanks.